Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today I am continuing my super simple series with a super simple natural lotion. Last year I shared a super simple moisturizing lotion that wasn't all natural, and so today I'm sharing a <laughs> super simple lotion formulation that is all natural. The two big changes that needed to be made to the formulation to naturalize it or to the emulsifier and to the preservative. As a side note, I really recommend pulling up the not natural, super simple lotion that I shared so that you can kind of compare them side by side and just, just see. It's a good learning experience. Our emulsifier in this super simple natural lotion is called Redemulse SCG. This is an anionic EcoCert natural complete emulsifying wax and I love the way it makes lotions feel. It's got a really nice kind of powdery finish on the skin, it is just gorgeous. It also helps boost the moisturizing properties of our emulsions. It is sold under quite a lot of different names like Ecomulse and Emulsimulse, so please make sure you are looking at the inky for whatever you are buying to make sure you are getting the right thing. I have included the inky and lots of the trade names that I found this product sold under in the Humble Bee and Me encyclopedia entry for it, so please make sure you're checking that out. That is linked in the blog post, which is always linked in the description box below my videos. Our natural preservative is GeoGuard EC so this preservative I find can really lower the pH of our formulations and sometimes a little bit too much and this was one of those cases where it was a little bit too much and so to counteract that I have included a bit of L-arginine to just gently bump up the pH of this formulation. L-arginine is an ingredient that I first learned about and first started working with as part of my Formula Botanica Diploma in Organic Hair Care Formulation. If you'd like to read my review of that course or of this skincare diploma I have from them, or if you'd like to just try out some of their training for free, they are offering a free masterclass starting quite soon here. And so if you'd like to sign up for that, I will throw a link to that in the description box below this video. I did a lot of work and created many different iterations of this formulation in order to ensure Sure that when made is written, the pH is good for both the preservative and for our skin. If you are changing anything, please be aware that you will need to test the pH and potentially adjust it to make sure that everything is still all happy. If you're not quite there yet in your formulating journey, no worries. I just recommend making the super simple moisturizing lotion that I shared last year because the preservative in that formulation doesn't pull down the pH of our formulation and it also has a much broader effective pH range. Making this is really quite easy and it is a great introduction into making natural emulsions and just emulsions in general. If you would like to learn more about this formulation, please make sure you're reading the partner blog post linked in the description box below this video. All right, I think that's enough. Let's go make a lovely old natural super simple lotion. We'll begin by combining the ingredients for our heated water phase in a beaker. So in the beaker here, I've already got 68.7 grams of distilled water. In here, I have 10 grams of vegetable glycerin. And in here, I have 0.8 grams of a 10% L-arginine solution. So I'm going to start by just adding a bit of the water to the arginine, giving that a bit of a stir, a lot like I often do with cool down phase and then popping that back in there. The L-arginine is in there for pH adjusting and it's pretty important that we get as much of it, you know, out of here and into our formulation as possible. And then adding the vegetable glycerin. Our heated oil phase is very simple with just two ingredients. You'll need four and a half grams of Redemulse SCG. And for more information on this, make sure you're reading the Humble Bee and Me encyclopedia entry on it. It's sold under quite a few different names. And then 15 grams of sunflower oil or some other sort of inexpensive lightweight liquid carrier oil. For more details on that, make sure you're reading the blog post. Before we move on to heating, I'm going to weigh the water phase and note that weight making sure to note that it also includes the spatula and this will allow us to replace any water lost to evaporation during heating. To heat our faces, we're going to use a water bath. So this is a wide flat bottom saute pan with about an inch or three centimeters of water in the bottom of it. And I'm going to go pop this on the stove top over low to medium low heat to heat both phases to the same temperature and melt our emulsifying wax. Once everything has heated through, you can remove your water bath from the heat and remove your beakers from the water bath. The first thing we're going to do is replace any water lost to evaporation. So we'll put the water phase beaker back on the scale and then refer to that number we wrote down earlier and add just enough preheated distilled water to bring that number back up to what it was before. And then we'll give that a stir and then we're gonna pour it into our oil phase. You can see immediately that it has started to emulsify. It's turning all 
old, lovely and milky, and that is a very good sign. So up next, we are going to give this a nice blending with an immersion blender. So you do wanna make sure you are using an immersion blender and not something that's gonna whisk a bunch of air into this. So nothing that's like a beater attachment or a whisk attachment, but we'll begin by popping the blender in the beaker and you'll wanna do a few quick bursts. And then you can work your way up to a full blend. If you just kind of go in full bore, you tend to spray really liquid lotion everywhere. All right, so that was about 30 seconds of blending. And uh, that's, that's it. I was testing this formulation with just really hand whisking and a little bit of extra help from a milk frother and that worked just fine as well. At this point in time, we only have one ingredient left, which is our preservative. But the preservative needs to be added to a cool product and this lotion is still really quite hot. And as you can see, it is still very thin too. So as it cools, it's going to thicken up. And then once it is cooled to room temperature, we will be able to add our preservative. So I'm going to uh, stop the cameras now, but you know, every couple minutes, I'm gonna come back and give this a stir so it's never sitting for too long without a bit of a poke and a prod. I'm making sure to really scrape down the sides of the beaker and scrape down to the bottom of the beaker as well, just to make sure everything is getting nice and incorporated. I'll see you once this is cool enough to add our preservative. While we wait for the lotion to cool, I want to take a wee moment to tell you about something new I am trying with this video and post. The general gist of it is I am going to take some questions that I receive about this formulation that aren't answered already in the video and the partner blog post, and I'm going to make a curated follow-up Q&A video and blog post to really answer those questions with attention and intention and in a very like, broad and broadcasted way. With the way that I usually do things where I'm releasing new formulations twice a week, I kind of find myself in a bit of a tumble cycle where I am working on a new formulation and a new video and a new blog post while simultaneously trying to offer you know, support and troubleshooting and question answering for everything that I've already done. And so sometimes that means there's not really a lot of time for answering those questions. So I'm hoping that by creating an entire piece of content dedicated to answering questions about this formulation that I will you know, really have the time to really answer those questions. So if you have a question, step one is always to read that partner blog post and make sure you're watching the whole video. But if you have a question that I am not covering in those pieces of content, or perhaps that you would like to see expanded on, you'll please ask Leave it in a comment here on YouTube or over on the blog. And then in about a week, I will be picking some and filming a nice curated, concise Q&A video to answer some of those questions. Yeah, so, so that's the new thing I'm trying and I hope you like it and I hope it works out great. Now let's get back to that lotion. The lotion has thickened up beautifully as you can see and it has cooled down nicely. I ended up actually just taking the beaker with me to my computer and replying to a bunch of YouTube comments and uh, stirring the lotion sort of between comments and when I was waiting for pages to load and whatnot. So you can see it is absolutely gorgeous and silky and beautiful. And so up next is incorporating our preservative. Our natural preservative for this formulation is GeoGuard ECT. This uh, is from Voyager. You can see the inky below. This preservative is sold under a few different names. So make sure you're looking for the inky rather than the name if you're not having any luck with the name. So we'll need one gram of GeoGuard ECT. I'm just weighing this out into a small little prep cup on a nice precise scale. To combine, I'm going to pop some of our product in here. I'm gonna give that a whisk. And then we're transferring this back into the parent batch and then stirring to combine. You can also just weigh the preservative right into the beaker if you have a scale that uh, can tolerate, you know, that is precise enough to weigh out one precise gram, but won't uh, kind of overload if you have your entire batch on there. 
and then give that a good stir to make sure everything is blended thoroughly. And once that is done, we need to check the pH to make sure that it is good for the skin and for the preservative. Our first step is making a 10% dilution of the lotion. Now I know that this is kind of counterintuitive, so if you'd like to learn more about why we do this, please make sure you're reading the partner blog post and checking out the recommended reading that I provide there. There's some links to some articles on why we do it this way. And then we're gonna add enough distilled water to make a 10% dilution. So two grams of lotion plus 18 grams of distilled water equals a 10% dilution. Whisk to combine. This is the solution we're going to test with our pH meter. So if you'd like to learn more about the pH meter that I have, please make sure you're looking up pH meter in the Humble Bee in the Encyclopedia. I have more details there. I'm just rinsing it off with a bit of distilled water, gently drying with a clean cloth. Turn it on. Tip the solution to make sure that you know it's deep enough to submerge the sensor and then we're just gonna kind of give it a little bit of a stir and hold it in there and wait until we get a happy face so we know that uh, we've got ourselves a pH reading. Five point four nine. That's great. Now that we know our pH is all good and happy, all that's left to do is packaging this up and we're all done. For a formulation like this, where the lotion is fairly thin, it's still rather fluid, we have quite a few different packaging options. So you can choose some sort of a soft squeeze tube. So these ones open up like that and then you can pour the lotion through the nice opening there. This one uh, is from Yellow Bee and was a gift. This particular soft squeeze tube has a smaller opening. So depending on the viscosity of the product you wanna put in there, you might need to use a syringe or a funnel or like a piping bag to fill these. This was also a gift from Yellow Bee. This product is thin enough to work in a pump top bottle. This is one I purchased from Voyager and this one is a gift from Yellow Bee. So these will both work well. And you can also use a uh, bottle that has like a dispensing cap. So these ones are, disc top type ones that kind of flip up. And then this one is a turret cap. But for a formulation of sort of this viscosity, I recommend choosing a bottle that you can squeeze like these ones, rather than something like this, which is, is brittle. It's like it just gets difficult to kind of propel the product out of a bottle that you can't squeeze with this viscosity. This type of bottle would be good for something that was quite a lot more fluid. Uh, these were both purchased from Voyager and this was a gift from Yellow Bee. So I think I'm going to use this little green 100 mil pump top bottle. With these ones, you do need to pop the uh, pump before you fill it because you have to be able to hold this stem sturdy and if it's already in the bottle, you can't do that. So this product is still pretty fluid, so I'm not going to bother with a funnel, but kind of depending on how steady your hand is and how confident you are in your pouring and how wide the opening of your bottle is, you may want to employ a funnel of some kind to make sure things go where they're supposed to go. This is, this is right on, right on the border of being a little bit too kind of ploppy and a little less poury. Uh, any thicker than this, and I would definitely want to be using a funnel. grab a bit of the leftovers from the spatula for an application demo. See it's nice and white and very smooth. Spreads around really beautifully. Not really noticing any soaping there. And it's nice and lightweight with a ever so slight almondy smell from the preservative. And there we go. We just made a super simple all natural lotion. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and please remember to read the full partner blog post linked 
in the description box below this video. If you have any questions that aren't answered in this video or in the blog post, leave them in the comments below and I will be creating a follow-up Q&A video about this formulation where I'll be answering some of the questions that I get about it and that'll be coming out in a week or two. So stay tuned for that. And of course, don't forget about that free formulation masterclass offered by Formula Botanica. The sign up for that is linked in the description box below this video as well. But yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you.